All right, welcome back, Cracker Jacks. And in this video, of course, we're going to be talking about the order of operations. I don't even know why I say that. The title is at the top of every video. You can clearly, you know, you already know what we're going to be talking about. But, you know, it's a habit, hard to break, whatever. So let's go ahead and get started. And for this example, I actually opened up uh, its 19 Bucky store. So if you want to follow along, go ahead. So the first thing is this. Go ahead and make a new equation in any empty cell. We won't worry about the data right now since this is just a quick demonstration. And type in this formula. 5 plus 10 multiplied, and of course that's asterisk, 3. Now hit enter and check it out. It gives you 35. Alright, why is that? Because I thought that 5 plus 10 was 15 and multiplied by 3 okay that's 45 15 times 3 that is 45 isn't it yep so let's hit enter again 35 what the heck is going on well the reason that it's giving you a different answer than you may expect is because of the order of operations now just like in math class or I don't know maybe you forgot about it if you're watching this you know way after high school or anything the order of operations states that in every single equation this is the order first you do whatever is in parentheses and then you do exponents then multiplication and division and then addition and subtraction so basically in every equation or at least in this example multiplication takes place first before addition so what it's doing is not 5 plus 10 times 3 what's going on is actually it's taking 10 times 3 which is 30 and then adding 5 to it and that why, that's why whenever we hit enter, we get 35. So a lot of people, um, they get kind of confused whenever they're programming computers and they really get results other than expected. So if you ever um, are doing that, just remember PMDAS, order of operations. So what if we actually wanted to add 5 and 10 first and then multiply the result by 3? Well, what we can do is, of course, surround 5 plus 10 in parentheses, and parentheses take precedent over everything in Excel. So now, what you're doing is you're forcing Excel to form this between the parentheses first, which is 15, and then multiplying the result of that by 3. There we go, 45. Now, sometimes, even though you may want something like this and you actually want the result to be 35 sometimes you're gonna see me using these parentheses anyways and that just for readability so even though it would do this by default to me this is actually a lot more readable since I'm used to seeing things in parentheses happen first so again it's not gonna hurt anything if you overuse parentheses but there you go so I'm gonna shut up about order of operations now because that took a longer than expected and now I wanna move on to naming a range and I actually probably should have taught you guys this a while ago, but this is another cool tip that's going to help you a lot. See, whenever you select a range, you see that, okay, this is going to be kind of hard to work with if we ever want to reference this section again. I mean, what we can do is, it's probably easier to see if you set it equal to an equal sign. Look what happens. Of course, whenever we reference a cell, we just type in the cell address. Now, whenever we re reference a range or a bunch of cells, what it does is it takes the address of the first one and the address of the last one, and it references it by kind of forming a rectangle. Now, this will work fine, and if we ever want to use all of these numbers in a formula, okay, we can use this, no problem. However, whenever you're just looking at it, as human beings it's really difficult to say okay b3 to b15 I have to go back and look and what was this oh it was the quantity of all my items again okay so another cool tip I want to show you guys is this you can actually give a name to a range of cells so select all of that data again and if you go up here this is the little naming box so what I can type is actually, okay, what do I want to name this range? Quantity. Okay, so now 
whenever I'm using this, all of these cells in an equation, check out, whenever I select these, it gives me the name quantity. So it's pretty much giving a range of cells a nickname. And you can use that nickname in any of your formulas. I'll actually show you one case where you can use it. So say that you wanted to average all of these numbers. So of course, I'll, sh I'll actually show you guys the uh, ugly way to do it first. So say that we wanted to average this column and this column. So what we can do is we can set an equal sign and there are actually a lot of built-in functions and I'll talk more about these later but for now I just want to demonstrate something. Go start typing in average and as you can see just like Google it auto completes so go down to average and hit tab and this is gonna say okay this is actually a built-in um, function to average a range of numbers so inside these parentheses and I typed the parentheses before but inside these parentheses select the range of numbers that you want to average so it says okay you want to average all the numbers from C3 to C15 that's your range okay we hit enter and check it out it does it works perfectly however then we give this to a friend and he says okay he looking at these formulas average C3 to C15 what the heck is in these I have to go look at them okay looks like he's trying to average the price right here so okay it's gonna cause a bunch of confusion and if you ever go back to actually check your work I don't know it's just like a pain in the butt so for this check out how easier this is start typing in average hit tab select the range and hit enter so now this is your formula just reading it and actually just teaching it if I say average quantity it's a lot easier to explain than average C3 to C15 range of numbers so that is the benefit of giving a nickname or naming a range of cells now another thing I want to mention real quick since we have a couple minutes is you're not only limited to giving a nickname to a range of cells but you can also give a nickname to one cell so if you click this instead of C3 you can actually name it like um uh, gloves price and hit enter so now instead of the address C3 you can use gloves price at any time and it's gonna work in any equation so I'll just demonstrate that real quick go ahead and pick an empty cell and as you see whenever I click it says gloves price plus I don't know like ten dollars or something and there we go so again anytime you want to make your formulas more readable remember that you can name ranges of cells and also individual cells and this little tip is gonna help you out a lot trust me so for now thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial